welcome. You are watching the Straight Beer News. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and today we'll be talking about multiple stories about Heineken in the news this week. First up, I uh, wanted to discuss with you the recent acquisition by Heineken of Japan's Kirin breweries in Brazil. There were 12 breweries that uh, the Japanese brewer Kirin sold to Heineken this week. And uh, the, the reason for such is, you know, the Brazilian economy has kind of been in the tank for the last few years. They've been in a severe recession, one of the worst in, in, in many years. And uh, it's not just economic, it's political, as there's all kind of uh, corruption and scandal going on in the government. It's, they've been a, it's been a long road to get them back um, into, you know, into the green, into um, a positive GDP. And they have currency inflation, there are all kinds of troubles there. And Kieran bought these breweries uh, back in 2011. They bought them for nearly $4 million, and now they're being sold for 1.1. Well, depending, depending on, the, on, the, um, on the news that you read, I've read anywhere from 700 million to 1 billion. So I'm not sure what to believe. What, what's 3 million, 300 million among friends, right? Among multinational conglomerate organizations. So it's somewhere in the high hundreds of millions or the low billions of dollars. So these, these breweries were money losers for Kieran, and, and they were pretty probably happy to, to be rid of them, even at the loss uh, that they were taking. They had been losing money in, in this region anyway. Uh, beer is a hard market there. Uh, there's multiple uh, uh, there's multiple comp complementary products. Uh, so the, not just beer is very competitive, but soda, craft sodas are very uh, competitive. Beverages in general, it's, it's hard to, to make headway there, and the recession just kind of compounded the difficulties there. So uh, Heineken bought these breweries in Brazil um, at a low value, and maybe at the right time. It seems that some economists think that Brazil is going to come out of the recession this year, and if not this year, most likely next year, and from that they, they should see reasonable uh, growth in the near term and then pro prosperous growth in, in the future. Uh, that's one of those markets that most economists see as growing uh, most rapidly. Pur this purchase, this acquisition makes Heineken now the number two in market share in Brazil right after AB InBev. Uh, this is just, uh, sometimes we in in America, we seem very Americentric and I know that my my news my news videos are seem to be also very Americentric, but if we take a step back and look at all of the acquisitions and the movies moves that have been made in the past couple of years, um, AB InBev has, has done a lot to take up the territory that Heineken once had, and so Heineken is kind of trying to, to counterpunch now. You know, they're they're entering a, a Brazilian market at possibly a, a good time for them. And they're already right off the bat the number two in market share and hoping to, to gain from there, gain some, uh, gain some ground on, on Anheuser-Busch InBev. The next story is uh, about a recent development um, with Heineken in the UK. So they have recently purchased Punch Taverns for 300 million pounds. And what that means is that they will be now owning um, 1,900 pubs in the, uh, in the United Kingdom. They already own about a thousand pubs, and so now they're, they're they've essentially tripled their size, which would make them the third largest pub group in the UK. Seems kind of in, in, interesting from a American standpoint of you know breweries owning pubs. That's not something that, that we do in America, uh, but in, in the UK that's legal. It's, it's something that, that they do, and the Heineken has said that they view that as a as a prosperous business for them, something that uh, has a lot of uh, margin, something that they see as a money maker and they will continue to do. So as I said, this puts them at the number three largest pub group now in the UK and it raises the question of, of competition and of ethical behavior. So in the thousand pubs that they own already, they've tried to keep the uh, the, the selection at about 80, roughly 85% of their own product, that's not a whole lot left for the, for the other guys. And so these, the Punch Tavern 
um, landlords, uh, the people who are running the business, are concerned now that with Heineken owning their brewer, or their, owning their pub, that they're going to have to shrink their selection. That now they're going to have much less choice, and not just them, but the, the consumer, the, the bar goer, he's going to have less choice as well. Mostly it's going to be, if, if Heineken sticks to what they've done in the past and in their other pubs, 85% of that selection is going to be their own stuff, their own brand. And there's concern now about competition, and it's something that the uh, United Kingdom is looking into right now. It's a competitive uh, analysis that they're going to, to run, and if there is going to be an issue, kind of similar to the, how the U.S. has antitrust laws, and when there's a big merger or an acquisition, they have to pass through you know, antitrust bodies to defend themselves. This could go deeper, and we'll see where it heads from here, but right now it's kind of just a high-level competitive assessment. The last story is about how Heineken hasn't been the most friendly environmental neighbor in uh, England. They recently settled with the Environment Agency in the, in the UK. The Heineken owns a cider plant in Hereford, England, which is just a little outside of Wales. And a few years ago there was an incident where there's, uh, there's a brook that runs nearby, and two to 3,000 fish were killed due to pollution. And the pollution's uh, source was a particular incident at this um, Heineken-owned cider, fact cider factory. The incident um, comes stems from a container of ammonia-filled water or ammonia-contaminated water being uh, dumped down a water drain. And that drain running into the brook uh, essentially killed these 2,000 to 3,000 fish and so this, the settlement that was agreed upon with the Environment Agency was 160,000 uh, pounds which will go to a couple of different charities in, in the area and Heineken has also agreed to pay for the uh, legal costs of the Environmental Agency and lastly they agreed as part of the settlement that Heineken will institute or will, will invest two and a half million pounds to a uh, management training program to properly train their employees on how to deal with uh, waste and so that uh, uh, an occurrence like this doesn't occur again. However, it does seem to me, although this was a settlement between the two bodies, uh, so obviously they agreed that 160,000 pounds was sufficient, it doesn't seem sufficient to me. I think that a, as a corporation who should be a, a good neighbor, a good citizen of the, the world, that they should take better care of the, the environment and those uh, the nature around them, and that does not seem to be the case in this, in this instance. There, there should have been, I believe, some sort of punitive award. 160,000 pounds is roughly $200,000. That's, that's change, that's pennies to, uh, to Heineken. Although it's, it's a great amount of money that's going to those charities, and I'm sure they're, they're going to be very grateful, there should have been punitive damages. Some, something in the millions of dollars. I mean, one million. Two. One million dollars. Two million something. Um, the two and a half million going to the, the training, that's one thing. That's all internal. I, I would have liked, I would have preferred to see something a little more punitive um, go after, uh, to, to go after them, to, to just dissuade them from ever doing this kind of a thing again. So that, that's just my opinion. You may have some other opinion. Let me know if, what your thoughts are. Maybe, maybe I'm being too harsh. Uh, but yeah, leave a, leave a comment in the section in the comments below and I'd be happy to interact with you. Well, that'll be it for this time, guys. Thank you once again for watching. This has been the Straight Beer News, and I've been your host, Chris Hardy. Don't forget to check me out on the, on the social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also find me on Untapped. If you're there, you can find me there as well. All that information where to find me is below in the description of the video. And if you could please, if you like what I do, if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, I would appreciate that. Also, if you could subscribe, that would be great. That way you don't miss any episodes in the future. You can find them right at the top of your feed in YouTube, and you can watch more of me there. So the, the subscribe button should be coming up. It's the circular uh, Old English style S. Click on that and it'll take you to the subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.